Hello, today we are going to start on the last chapter on Flat Stanley, Life in the Fast Lane. You should have been able to already read or go along with video one, that was chapter one and two, video two, which was chapter three, and video three, which was, which was chapter four. In this last video, chap, uh, video four, it is chapter five. <clears throat> Here is Flat Stanley. It looks like he's walking on the sidewalk, saying hi to people. And people are looking at him. They all have smiles on their face. It looks like he's having a great time just walking by and saying hi to people. Let's get started with chapter five, Arthur's Good Idea. For a while, Stanley Lambchop was a famous name. Everywhere that Stanley went, people stared and pointed at him. He could hear them whisper, over there. Agnes, over there, there must, that must be Stanley's lamb chop, the one who caught the sneak thieves and things like that. But after a few weeks, the whispering and the staring stopped. People had other things to think about. Stanley did not mind. Being famous had been fun, but enough was enough. And then came a further change, and it was not a pleasant one. People began to laugh and make fun of him as he passed by. Hello, super skinny, they would shout, and even ruder things about the way he looked. Stanley told his parents how he felt. It's the other kids I mostly mind, he said. They don't like me anymore because I'm different, because I'm flat. Shame on them, said Mrs. Lambchop. It is wrong to dislike people for their shapes or their religion, for that matter, or the color of their skin. I know, Stanley said. Only maybe it's impossible for everybody to like everybody. Perhaps, said Mrs. Lambchop, but they can try. Later that night, Arthur Lambchop was woken by the sound of crying in the darkness. He crept across the room and knelt by Stanley's bed. Are you okay? He said. Go away, Stanley said. Don't be mad at me, Arthur said. You're still mad because I let you get tangled the day you were by kite, I guess. Skip it, will you? Stanley said. I'm not mad. Go away. Please, let's be friends. Arthur couldn't help crying a little too. Oh, Stanley, There's Arthur and Stanley holding hands. Stanley and Arthur on their on Stanley's bed. Please tell me what's wrong, Arthur said. Stanley waited for a long time before he could speak. The thing is, he said, I'm just not happy anymore. I'm tired of being flat. I want to be a regular shape again like the other people, but I'll have to go on being flat forever. It makes me sick. Oh, Stanley, Arthur said. He dried his tears on a corner of Stanley's sheet and could think of nothing more to say. Don't talk about what I just said, Stanley told them. I don't want the folks to worry. That would make it worse. You're brave, Arthur said. You really are. He took hold of Stanley's hand. The two brothers sat together in the darkness, being friends. They were both still sad, but each other, but each one felt a little better than he had before. And then suddenly, though he was not even trying to think, Arthur had an idea. He jumped up and turned on the light and ran to the big storage box where toys and things were kept. He began to rummage in the box. Rummage means to go through something really fast, just trying to look for something quickly. Stanley sat up in bed to watch. Arthur flung aside a football and some lead soldiers and airplane models and lots of wooden blocks. And then he said, aha, he had found what he wanted, an old bicycle pump. He held it up and Stanley and he looked at each other. Okay, 
Stanley said at last, but take it easy. He put the end of the long pump hose in his mouth and clapped his lips tightly about it so that no air could escape. I'll go slowly, Arthur said. It hurts if it hurts or anything, wiggle your hand at me. He began to pump. At first, nothing happened except that Stanley's cheeks bulged a bit. Arthur watched his hand, but there was no wiggle sign, no wiggle, no wiggle signal. So he pumped on and then suddenly Stanley's top half began to swell. It's working, it's working, shouted Arthur, pumping away. Stanley spread his arms so that the air could get around him, inside of him more easily. He got bigger and bigger. The buttons of his pajama top burst off. Pop, pop, pop. A moment more and he was all rounded out. Head and body, arms and legs, but not his right foot. That foot stayed flat. Let's look. Look at that. Let's look at his right foot. Oh, it looks like both feet are flat. And there's Arthur pumping away. And Stanley holding it, the hose in his mouth tightly so no air can escape. Arthur stopped pumping. It's like trying to do the very last bit of those long balloons, he said. Maybe a shake will help. Stanley took his right foot twice. Stan, excuse me. Stanley shook his right foot twice. And with a little whooshing sound, it swelled out to match the left one. There stood Stanley Lamb Chop as he used to be, as if he had never been flat at all. Thank you, Arthur, Stanley said. Thank you very much. The brothers were shaking hands when Mr. Lamb Chop strode into the room and Mrs. Lamb Chop right behind him. He heard you. We heard you, said Mr. Lamb Chop, up and talking when you ought to be asleep. Eh? Shame on George, said Mrs. Lamb Chop with surprise in her voice. What do you think happened? She was surprised to see Stanley probably all filled out. He looked like a regular little boy again. And there's Arthur. And there's Mr. Lamb Chop and Miss Lamb Chop. They all have a cup of cocoa, hot cocoa with marshmallows and chocolate chip cookies. Stanley's round again. You're right, said Mr. Lamb Chop, noticing. Good for you, Stanley. I'm the one who did it, Arthur said. I blew him up. Everyone was terribly excited and happy, of course. Mrs. Lamb Chop made hot chocolate to celebrate the occasion, and several toasts were drunk to Arthur for his cleverness. When the little party was over, Mr. and Mrs. Lamb Chop tucked the boys back into their beds and kissed them good night. And then they turned out the light. Good night, they said. Good night, said Stanley and Arthur. It had been a long and tiring day. Very soon, all the lamb chops were asleep. The end. So these are other books. First one, of course, that flat Stanley living life in the flat lane. And then subsequent titles that were made after the first one. We have Invisible Stanley. We have Stanley and the Magic Lamp. Stanley in Space. Stanley Christmas Adventure. And Stanley Flat Again. Thank you for visiting Mrs. Briseño's Book of the Month. So for the month of December, 2020, we have read Flat Stanley.